I got myself a new truck. Um, it's a G made GSO2F uh, assemble kit. It's the military version. There's a civilian version as well with some different uh, different accessories. It's got a roof rack and stuff like that. But I got this one instead of a bomb. It's, uh, the G made bomb on the same chassis, just because. Um, it was so cheap. It was such a good deal. It was 265 quid. Uh, it was usually over 300. And then there was a 10% off token. You just press the button and you got another 10% off. So it was about 239, 40, something like that. Can't do maths. Don't ask me. Don't know. So I'm going to unbox it for you because because I am. You can't stop me. I finally realised. I don't know if you can see. It's black and black. What this reminds me of, it, it's kind of odd. The second cool thing about this kit straight away is, I mean, why? What? What does that even mean? Who's saying that? Okay, so it's stuff in a box, um, which you've seen, and I'm gonna take it out of the box. It's quite impressive. Okay, so these are the contents of the A bag. Uh, you can see it's mostly the external parts of the body, and there's quite a lot of them. And the other thing is that the plastic that they're all made from is pretty impressive. It's chunky stuff. Actually, that's different plastic from this because this is much bendier. Feels really rugged. These are obviously the uh, wheel arches. Big chunky rear bumper. Also. That's gonna last, that's not, not gonna break. Maybe a bit bendy. God knows, God knows, God knows. Oh, my God. That's a lot of gods. These look like light buckets. I think it's actually got light buckets. I'm sure they are, that's amazing. That's pretty high spec for a lot of things. Wipers even. Um, and of course, mirrors. Also some glass. Obviously the, the headlamps, I think there might be a light bar in the, I haven't got the front bumper. Let me add the front bumper, which is in a different bag. Obviously you've got D-rings and you've got a fair lead in there and there's heavy grill. Uh, no lights in there, so I guess the lights all go in the grill. So that's bag A. This is bag B, or what remains of it, because it was just the front bumper, and that. And bag C is a good one, look at this. This has got all sorts of stuff in it, including the chassis rails, metal chassis rails, C-channel. Then a lot of bits, if you've ever built an SCX-102, they look quite familiar, uh, like this battery tray. These uh, bumper mounts, one there, one there, very similar to the Tensu. Got some plastic servo horns there in different spline sizes. That's very nice. I think this is an electronics box, but it's molded. It looks sort of molded after a sump or something like that, which is quite nice. Uh, and the cross braces, which again, very Tensu-ish. Suspension mounts. Eventually, I will be getting rid of the two rear ones on this because Oh, you can't see it now, but there was the uh, LC70 body that this chassis is going to go under. The centre skid belly thing, pretty standard. Battery tray mountings probably. Some side floors, pretty 10 to ish I tell a lie, maybe that's the receiver box. In fact, it says on here, waterproof receiver box. And this is very TRX4. No harm in that, it's a very good one. Another little, did that fall off? Don't know, wasn't watching. Battery strap even, pretty inclusive. And those bits, oh is that, that's a servo saver, plastic servo saver. Then they even give you body clips and there's some O-rings in here, which I presume are for damping the body. Anyway, so that, was bag C. Right, just to confuse matters, this is also a bag. Bag A, a bag, 
And this is the gearbox. Metal gears, that's a good thing. Shush. Prisoners. Always making a fuss. This is a two speed gearbox. Um, a bit concerned I have heard that the shifter mechanism, the external shifter mechanism, uh, is not the best. From Pez RC, he wasn't all that impressed with it, but um, he only said all of that after I bought this, so thanks. Plastic gearbox casings, um, it's a, I don't know if it's a totally divorce transfer case, I think it might stick on the end, but it's another one of the reasons I got the F model, which is a, a new version of the chassis. Uh, I did want a, a nice low transmission. Uh, with the motor up forward and then you know the rest of it quite low so I could get some kind of uh, interior in there. Uh, the motor mount, slipper clutch, uh, and there's the friction plates for it and the spur gear. Um, yeah it's a spur gear isn't it I think. Yeah 45 tooth there. I imagine <clears throat> there's a pinion in here that's probably that one. Who cares. Oh, that'll be the bracket for the servo. Apparently it takes a full-size servo to work the gear shift, which is pretty good. You don't have to mess around with a micro one. And this bag, which you can see I've already opened, um, full of bearings, which is pretty good. Except they're only, as you can see, metal shielded bearings. So I've ordered rubber sealed ones that do a much better job of keeping out water. I've been having a bit of a bearing nightmare lately. Uh, I've realised that buying cheap bearings is a false economy. Don't do it, kids. Just say no. Don't do it. Okay, just for the sake of absolute hilarity, not on my part, on Gmate's part, this is also bag A. Or another bag, it should be A bag, another bag. So thanks for that, that's really useful. Luckily, it's pretty obvious that these are the axles. Uh, what do you call that bit? The pumpkin cover is it's tilted backwards. So you just get a nice smooth uh, ridge underneath that will hopefully not catch on the rocks. These feel pretty good. Probably quite a lot of nylon in the plastic. And they feel good and strong and rugged. Not worried about those breaking particularly. A bit worried about that breaking. Oh look, slot on C hubs that presumably you can clock for different Car strangles, is it? I don't know why you'd do that, but you can. Tiny plastic hex wrench. This is something I'm a bit concerned about. Um, these are so far the only um, ball ends for the links that I found, and they're plastic. And I thought this came with metal links, uh, balls, balls, balls for the links. Does have metal links. These are just the steering link and the panhard link in this bag. But I, I haven't so far found the hopefully stainless steel balls for this because they're, I think they're about 20 quid if you do buy them. It was one of the upgrades I wanted from the assemble kit. Some very pot metal looking metal bits, but they aren't parts that look like they'll matter. They're basically wheel hexes and those pumpkins. And these are unidentifiable. I don't know what they are. I think they might go inside the axle so hopefully they are strong enough. Ring and pinions, these feel and look like a different sort of metal to this cheap stuff um, and will hopefully be strong and good and mighty and brave. Another set of bearings, same deal, the axle stubs, the drive shafts that go into the axles. Oh and a little pot of grease, once again very all-inclusive. So that was another, another bag A, another. I think we got to C and then uh, I don't think, there wasn't a D bag, which is good I suppose. And we skipped straight to F, which is all the fasteners, basically loads of bolts, all individually packaged. Which is nice for the sake of neatness, but these days, I mean, do we really need one screw in a plastic bag? It's a, bit, it's a bit wrong, isn't it, these days, with plastic waste. Uh, anyway, that's how it is. I'm just having a look through again, just in case the balls, balls, the metal ball ends are in here, but they're not. A little ball joint, probably for a pan hard. Uh, it's even got the wheel nuts. Oh, these are wheel nuts. These are flange nuts. 
I love a flange. All right, well, we're nearly there, and guess what? It's another bag A. I'm not gonna open this one, though, because um, I'm not. Metal bodied shocks, uh, threaded for adjustment, obviously. You've got four springs in there. Um, four springs, Dirt Technic, apparently. <laughs> I'll probably cut that out. Oil, doesn't say what weight of oil. Um, some shock collar, all the other bits. Some pistons, in fact. Wow. <laughs> it's got three different types of piston. Um, you've got two holes, three holes, and four holes. So obviously the four holes will flow the oil quicker and the damping will be uh, less. There'll be less damping and the, and the shock will move quicker. So you can tune it that way as well as with the oil. The oil looks quite thin, actually. It's pretty thin. Another one I'm not opening. Uh, it's a B bag. I think we've already had B, but oh, I've given up on the alphabet entirely. Uh, aluminium links. Oh, are they steel? It could be steel, might be lime. Metal, let's say metal. Metal links. Loads of rotting. Drive shafts, plastic drive shafts. Four lengths of central sliding part and six ends. So you can build, obviously, all the different wheelbases from this one part. You don't have to buy extra. That's pretty good. Then, of course, you've got wheels. They are beadlock, proper beadlocks. Um, on the downside, they're plastic, so they're not going to be as heavy, which can be very useful. I'll probably change those. Quite good looking military style steel looking wheels. And the tyres, big chunky tyres, 1.9s. Obviously the feed locks are 1.9s. They smell quite weird for tyres. Not bad, not bad. I don't know if you remember, I don't know how old you are, but there used to be these little monsters they made that you stuck on your finger, little rubbery monster faces. Um, uh, and they had like wobbly hands and uh, you stuck them on your finger and wondered why you bought it when you were little. Um, they smell like that, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure how grippy monsters are. These foams look absolutely terrible. In fact, they're, uh, the foams are rubbish. They're, they're not even round, but there is fortunately one simple trick you can use to fix these. Uh, as they say on the internet, you just have to... So that's the... That's the tyres. And look at this, inner fenders, as they call them, or wheel wells, as we really should call them, because we're not American. I'm not American, anyway. All four, you don't have to 3D print some, you don't have to pay 15 pounds for some crappy Lexan ones like you do from RC four wheel drive. They're just good, solid, bendy, fen uh, bendy fenders, bendy, bendy wheel wells, which is ace. It's even got a QC pass card look, so I know exactly who to blame when I can't find, I can't find the stainless steel balls. You dick. And then there's this, the body. Um, these days, I'm kind of a bit over Lexan in general. Partly the, the level of detail um, compared to ABS, plastic, hard plastic. Partly the pain of painting them on the inside. So I've got tires in my nose now. Oh, partly the noise when you go over bumps or crash or whatever, and it, and it just like that. It's like a Tupperware pot. It's, it's, yeah, it's not sexy, is it? But this, I mean, I do like a Chevy Blazer. Who doesn't like Chevy Blazer? And this is very Blazer-esque. Obviously not licensed. It's a buffalo in, in reality. Um, but it's very nice, it is very nicely detailed. Good, thick Lexan. The arches aren't cut out for you or anything, but the, the, the lines are really strong. Um, should be really easy to follow. There's a lot of nice detail on there. Okay, this is the last bag, randomly called C bag as well. Look, it's got an aerial. It's like the old days, it's like the 80s all over again. Whippy aerial. I didn't like them at the time when they wave around in the air. I know there are Plenty of people who do really like that. I know Mark, Brian out there, you like them. Uh, but I didn't like them at the time because they weren't very scale. So I still don't like them now because nostalgia, I suppose. <laughs> Good, thick manual. Hopefully not thick in the wrong way. Buffalo assemble. Window masks. They thought of everything. Pretty comprehensive uh, sticker sheet. Military-esque. 
stuff, even bullet holes. <laughs> The bath, the bleh. That's it. Bolts. 